Have you heard from George Brown? I wasn't expecting to. Don't be flippant. You've ruined everything. You've destroyed the country. We don't know that. We would have heard from him if the answer were yes. Well, we'll know soon enough, won't we? Why did you have to risk everything? It's not on my head, it's up to him. Yes, exactly. You've put our future in the hands of your personal enemy and dared him to thwart you. And now, he will destroy us. Or he won't. Enjoy your last five minutes as Premier. McDonald! Well, have you worked? This is a disaster. everything else right to the frontier all the way to sarnia how close are we if we can peel off one or two of john a mcdonald's cronies around kingston we'll form the government gentlemen we've held cornwall what about around kingston no 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 no, no. they've all gone conservative <sighs> what have you heard damn mcdonald we needed those seats to win so we've lost george We've made impressive gains, at least. Hell with gains, Gordon. We ought to be the government. Because we let Lower Canada have half the seats, no matter how much larger we get, a handful of Tories can join up with the French and Upper Canada gets robbed again. Write it down, George. The paper has to go out. All right. Make room on the front for 300 words, 400 more on page two. What do you want for the title? Unpopular conservatives hang on? Don't be soft. Turncoat Tories sell out to French again. 
Oh, we've still got a hole below the fold. What do you want in it? Premier's railroad scandal nearly brings him down. It's not a full-blown scandal. It will be. Go work. The paper's got to get out. Mowat, heard you won. Congratulations. Thank you. Darling, is that you? I waited up for you. Did you win? Of course I won, Isa. Of course you did. Now you can take some time at home, can't you? Premier summoned the cabinet immediately. We had terrible results in the West. He nearly lost his seat. It's not right. You never sees you. I don't have a choice. It's the Premier. We'll come too. We'll spend the session in Toronto with you. You can't. I won't take no from you, John. Isa, you can't. You're not well enough to travel. Perhaps in the fall. It's not right. A son should see his father. We'll arrange a visit, I promise. As soon as you're feeling better. Okay? I should sleep. Gentlemen, I am returned. John A, right here. Shave first? Indeed. And no trying to sneak leaving the sideburns. <clears throat> when I say clean shaven, I mean clean. You know, you're the only Englishman in the assembly without facial whiskers of any sort. <laughs> only one in check trousers, too, I expect. Most assuredly. Here I am thinking I'm setting a style and no one follows. Oh, they'll follow you, John A. They just won't wear your trousers. <laughs> It's less crowded, dude. Now, the important question is, what are we going to do with my hair? Well, I'll tell you what I object to, Mr. Speaker. I object to the fact that the Premier asks this House for money to fund a railroad of which he himself is president. Yeah. The man gives with his left hand and he pockets the money with his right. Yeah. And how does Mr. Brown think railways get built? If not funded by governments and, and managed by competent businessmen, does he deny the public's interest in modernization? Or does he prefer a way stick to travel with canoe? The future of Canada is railroads. And this government will continue to build them. Hypocrites! Mr. Speaker, no man of conscience would act the way our Premier acts today. This bill is a travesty and must be voted down. This theft of the public purse must end. Yeah. Has hypocrisy ever had such a naked face? The public will not stand for it. I will not stand for it. Yeah. You will not stand for it. You, that's preposterous. I, you, I, Mr. Brown is one to talk of hypocrisy. He owns the Globe newspaper. No one in this chamber lines his pockets off of politics more than Mr. Brown does. I, Mr. Speaker, I am debating the Premier. Throwing slander is not debate, Mr. Speaker, but that doesn't stop Mr. Brown. In fact, he throws slander at our Premier each and every day, doesn't he? And then, as sure as the sun will rise, that slander will be the front page of his paper in the morning. You're the slanderer, MacDonald. Am I? Premier's greed knows no bounds. What a shock. Now, I don't begrudge him. It's an easy racket. And it makes him a lot more money than we'll ever see. But surely it disqualifies him from calling others hypocrite for finding profit in their own endeavors. Indeed, if Mr. Brown is so keen to finding hypocrisy, I suggest he look to his own mirror. <laughs> Mr. Spence. Mr. Morrissey. Ah, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Good day, sir. And to you, sir. As I was speaking today, I thought I perceived some 
Sympathy for my complaints against the Premier. Was I mistaken? If I can be blunt, there is an opportunity here for you gentlemen to preserve your standing in both the Assembly and your own ridings. An opportunity? He means to cross over. I know what he means. I'm asking what he's offering. I thought that was plain. Same positions under me as you have now under McNabb. Otherwise, when this government falls, and it will fall, McNabb keeps on with this railroad nonsense, I will have no other choice but to run reliable men against both of you. Count on it. Hard pressed to find this. So, when do you go over to Brown? How many are you taking with you? Who told you? You just did. You're not thinking this through. Yes, we have a problem with Sir Alan, but you must think of the consequences here. You'll put George Brown in power. We don't have a choice, John. McNabb's a stone around our neck. And Brown's not as bad as you say he is. Oh, there is nothing wrong with wanting representation by population. He's anti-French. He's a bigot. I'll, I'll grant you he's anti-Catholic. No, he's anti-French. He's both. Well, so are half my voters. The French are easier to deal with than Brown is. It's one thing to stir up anger and unrest to sell his newspapers, but he goes beyond that. George Brown is dangerous. Going around telling people he'll solve the problem of the French. <clears throat> solve the French? It's nonsense. And if it leads anywhere, it leads to violence. John? McNabb is poison to all of us. He's just dragging us down. If Morrison and I don't go over, someone else will. The reality is, we have the John. country we have, and the French are part of it. We have to make it work. George Brown can't do that. And you both know it. Otherwise, you'd already have gone over. We can't stay under McNabb, John A. I'm sorry, we can't. It would be different if you were leader. Surely the thought has crossed your mind. John A., you know Mademoiselle Cuvillier? Mademoiselle, enchanté, comme toujours. Your family as well? My wife threatens to visit, otherwise they're fine. Mine too, constantly. She won't ever come. She just wants me to know she could. <laughs> so, trouble? Spencer Morrison. We're going to cross to the Liberals. Sir Alan and his railroad. What do you propose? I fear we must convince him to step aside. I agree. But of course, I can be no part of it. No politician can be seen sticking the knife into his own leader and hope to replace him. My hands must be clean. Are you capable of it? Well, I wanted to discuss what happens after. What's there to discuss? I'll be premier. You're the obvious choice, yes. I am the only choice. No one else controls a fraction of the seats I do. Of course. But? But that would put a fully French face on a largely French membership. George Brown will wipe us out in Upper Canada. And in the face of Brown's bigotry, the French population will respond by uniting even more strongly behind me. Whatever gains the Liberal make in Upper Canada, Dorion's Rouge will pay the price in Lower. It will balance out. It won't balance. It will deadlock. English versus French. It'll only get worse from there. Who else is there? Believe it or not, Spencer Morrison suggested me. You. I want a real partnership, George. The two of us governing together, not just carving out fiefdoms for ourselves like you do with McNabb. I want to get things done in this place. You'll still control Lower Canada, and I will commit fully to Montreal as the financial capital. And my client, the Grand Trunk, as our national railroad? Yes. With Montreal as its headquarters. And you'll have me, and together we could shape the assembly to our will. Perhaps we could. <laughs> 